Hi everyone, it's Blessy and Pauline here. We're on site for a brand new segment to the show. Welcome to the first edition of Club Fuji Upfront. Club Fuji Upfront is where we sit down with experts to talk about issues affecting youth. That's right. And we have a very remarkable first guest. She was able to turn her daughter's tragic passing into a movement to help people around the world stop bullying. We're here with Carol Todd, Amanda Todd's mother. Carol, thank you for talking with us. We really appreciate you taking time in the show. Thanks for inviting me. So we've been following your story very closely, but there might be people around the world watching today who don't know your daughter's story. Tell us about Amanda. Amanda was a 15-year-old girl, and in 2012, she took her own life. And um, in, back in 2010, she was on the internet, and she was she was a 13-year-old child, um, just doing things that she thought were normal, but some of the things, uh, of course, um, she shouldn't have been doing. And she was chatting online, and she was thinking she was chatting online with people her own age. And so she got into some stuff, and someone asked her if she would um, show her, her bare chest, and she did. And at the other end, they took an image of it and then threatened, extorted her in doing more. And so that led on to um, some of the stuff that she said no, and, and they put it online for her friends on Facebook to see, and, and that caused her some um, discomfort. Right, mm -hmm. um, brought on some anxiety and stuff, and then it brought on some online and offline bullying from her peers, yeah. and that led to um, you know more anxiety. She switched some schools, and the internet, of course, we know follows you everywhere yeah. now, yeah. right? There's no hiding mm -hmm. from it. So whenever she was supposed to go into a new school, mm -hmm. then those kids would find out and then they would bully her online and offline yeah. also. So it, it was like a never-ending cycle. And it got so bad that she was afraid to go out in public and, and people would. she thought people were laughing at her and, and so she got depressed about that and she couldn't... All she wanted was to be normal again and that was so hard for her after so such a long time and so you know down the road two years later she just was in so much despair that she took her life which is really sad and of course not an answer to anything so and now we have Amanda's legacy so we can try and stop it. Now Amanda made a video depicting her struggles and it went viral soon after her passing in 2012. Right. Uh, why do you think she made the video? I think she made the video in order to show her peers and to show herself that she was ready to tell her story mm -hmm. out loud and so that it was just one story and that people wouldn't be making things up as as they went around spreading rumors or lies or, or cyber harassing her. It was start to finish, like everything that she wrote was so was so true and so factual and after she died because she had posted this five weeks before she died, um, people just started sharing it. And mm -hmm. so to date, it's got about 30 million views around the world. And it's just, you know, it's, it's Amanda telling her story and trying to help others. I think what the video did was it told others that you can share your stories out loud and make sure that it's known so that we know that there are, it's a problem out there, right? Yeah. But, but the problems have solutions. Definitely. It's important to note that the video wasn't Amanda's only way of reaching out. Your family had a very important role in doing whatever you could do to help. Which resources did you use to help Amanda? Um, well, she wasn't f well. Um, of course, we used all our, our resources within the school system, within our community, within the health services. Um, and, and they worked for us. And so it's all about being an advocate for um, your child or for someone that you care about and so if I my message is that if someone is is trying to reach out for help for someone that they care about and they're reaching a dead end you can't stop you just have to keep going and make sure that you use your voice to find someone who's going to mm -hmm. to help you because there are no dead ends right you can't mm -hmm. you can't stop that so we had um, we had lots of people supporting but is it ever enough I'm not sure if it's ever enough, mm -hmm. right? Earlier this year, a man was arrested and charged in crimes against Amanda, as well as other victims. So right. can you give us an update on that? Um, I understand that he was in front of, his case was in front of the courts in the Netherlands. There was, there's newspaper articles written about that, um, and that he has also victimized other 
children and adults mm -hmm. around the world. So in the U.S., in the U.K., in the Netherlands. And I believe in the paper it said that there were probably nine cases out wow. there that the, the people or families are willing to press charges now. So that's, that's a new um, piece of news that's that's about this person so they've confiscated some of his stuff and mm -hmm. and they're still investigating and um, the newspaper said that next year in 2015 would maybe hopefully be a trial in the Netherlands and then yeah. after that hopefully that maybe you know he can be brought to Canada yeah. as as the BC Crown Council has stated and then they can try him for the charges oh. against hopefully against him about Amanda, yeah. mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. Sends a strong message. Yeah. So on that note, let's talk about Amanda herself, mm -hmm. as we should not only remember her for how she struggled in her darkest hour, but the positive impact that she had on others in her short life. What did Amanda like to do? Amanda liked to do everything. She loved animals. She mm -hmm. loved singing. She loved some forms of athletics. <laughs> she wanted to play volleyball, and she did that in middle school, mm -hmm. but she wasn't a very tall girl, so it was mm -hmm. kind of hard for her to be, you know, up front in the nets and, and stuff. But she tried, and, and she, you know, pets and animals, she loved them, and, and she would always be talking about, you know, what kind of pet could we have next. So we had... A hamster we had a rabbit we had oh. um, puppies we had fish we had almost everything that you could think of that was that wasn't part of her and then she also loved to cheerlead she was a flyer and she could only do that until her anxieties peaked and mm. then it, it just her self-confidence didn't give her confidence in order to cheer properly so unfortunately she had to quit and then with with singing she loved to sing and she had her songs up on YouTube and and all that for the for the longest time and I think I have a feeling that YouTube was maybe one of the places where people started to harass her mm. and a lot of sometimes harassments due to jealousy sometimes yeah. unfortunately right but she would sing everywhere she'd sing in the bathroom she'd sing in the car <laughs> she and you'd hear her and she took a break off singing for about a year when she was really in her darkest moments mm. and right before she died she actually started singing okay. again so mm -hmm. that showed me that she, there was something that was starting she was coming out of the some out of the dark areas of her life. I don't think she gave herself credit for the wonderful person that she was. She can only remember the horrible things people mm -hmm. were saying about her. And it, it's there's a saying out there is you can have a hundred people say that you're really smart and you're really pretty, but you, only one person can say that you're ugly and that you are you know a horrible person. And you remember that negative. You don't mm -hmm. remember the mm -hmm. other hundred positives. So that's something that we need to work on in society. Yeah. Definitely. So what songs did Amanda like to sing? Well, her favorite artists were Demi Lovato mm -hmm. and Christina Perry, Taylor Swift. And she was starting to look for other people to find songs to sing from. And I think she would have done that if, if she was here today. There's just so many, right? There's yeah. so many. And you know, for a child who had great learning disabilities and, and couldn't remember social study facts or, or mm -hmm. science things she could cer certainly remember the words to songs, songs it's yeah. just lyrics, amazing yeah. how that happened right the lyrics so that's that's amanda in a nutshell mm -hmm. great so some songs have been written in amanda's honor can you tell us about that a bit oh there's tons of songs that have been written the most remarkable one is wonder woman by elisa strata oh, and yeah. and that was written about shortly a week in the week right after Amanda's passing where Elise and Adam H mm -hmm. heard about Amanda's death and, and just went and, and wrote the song and recorded the first video for it and so it was ready two weeks later at one of the candlelight vigils in Surrey and then a week after they made the another video with, one, with um, Wonder Woman and that's the one that's on YouTube and that's that's out there available to mm -hmm. um, everyone and, and the song is about strength and yeah. and empowerment and and making sure you you know if something's bothering you you say stop it's it shouldn't happen and um, and that's and it's on iTunes right now and all yeah. the all the dollars are donated to um, Amanda's legacy to Great, keep that good. going so but the, I mean that's one of about 50 that are out mm -hmm. there, oh, right? yeah. and it's just huge. And it's an outlet for people, right? It's an outlet yeah. for people to share what they think and share what they feel, and, and that's good. It's yeah. good, yeah. 
I remember that song. Do you remember that yeah. song? Wonder Woman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard it on the radio a few yeah. times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and these songwriters are rather young, aren't they? Right? It's varied. You yeah. know what? I have, there's a country music person who lives in um, Quebec and he's written a song and so he's an older gentleman and he was inspired um, sitting out in watching Niagara Falls the falls and he would it inspired him to write a song and he wrote it with Amanda in mind and Mm. and so ironically I was in Niagara last summer and and I was actually almost in the same area that he was and so and then there's there's teenagers who have written songs there's a Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but she actually went to school with Amanda and she moved to Ontario and she wrote a song and, and put it on YouTube also. And, and so you have a range of 15 year olds to maybe 50 somethings um, and you have uh, people in the middle and, and some are just people like you and I who have mm-hmm. decided to write a song and some are, you know, recording artists who who want to make a difference. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it just... It just keeps going. And the funny thing is, I think, like True Colors by Cindy Lauper was yeah. redone back in the fall of 2012, winter oh. of 2012. And and that was inspired by Amanda's mm-hmm. death, too, in order to make things happen because the song talks about how everyone's unique and everyone's individual, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's just great to see the, the performing arts mm-hmm. component. Songs are really powerful. So, oh, yeah. words and lyrics, yeah, oh, yeah, they're also powerful. They yeah. all mean something. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to see many like-minded individuals involved in your cause. In fact, my sister and I are also singers, and we have our own song about bullying inspired by stories like Amanda's. Would you like to see it? Sure. Okay, let's roll the clip. All right, so that was a song called Stop the Bullying. Uh, What did you think? I thought it was great. I love it when, as you said, we are all sitting here in in Vancouver and you have the inspiration, something as a part of the the issues about bullying affect you, right? So you need to do something about it. So Mm. you have written a song and you've gone and performed it. You've videoed it for more to see. And so it's, it's you guys doing something in order to pass on and you're moving something forward it's it's a movement right and and you're sharing it and you're hoping that other people will share it Mm -hmm. at exponential numbers right and so it's great to see young people so interested in a cause and and putting their skills and talents into it right Mm -hmm. so I loved what you did I loved the the storyline I liked how you showed you know your your examples and and you you have a call to action right Mm -hmm. you have and 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 result uh, a problem solving thing mm. at the very end. So that's that's cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. We're really glad you like it. Mm-hmm. And now we're at Settlers Park in Port Coquitlam, and there's a bench dedicated to Amanda. The message on the bench reads: "Stay strong, Princess Snowflake, forever in our hearts. May angels lead you in and watch over us." What does this message mean to you? The message that the angels lead you in is, is part of, you know, a song Amanda really liked. And, and it actually it's on her YouTube video mm-hmm. that she posted. Um, the, be- the bench is special because it, it sits beside, um, unfortunately, she had a friend who also um, took his life earlier in the year. So the two benches sit side by side. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's a great place for Amanda's friends to go and sit right they come and sit they look at the lake because Amanda came here this is th- this is where we grew up the art you know the park is just down the road from our house mm-hmm. and so the pond is very soothing she would come here and sit on the hill and and think about life and stuff so having the bench there is is really good and it was um put there by our community so that's, that's even good. nicer yeah. 
How has Amanda's legacy affected communities all around the world? You know, I'm amazed at how it's affected communities and how it continues to affect communities. This October 10th will be two years since um, Amanda took her life, and it's still I still get messages of people watching it for the first time or hearing the story for the first time, and I think it's one of these ever-evolving tragedies that will continue to be a learning experience for some. Um, I just got a letter from someone at Niagara College in Ontario that says they use this in their coursework for, um, I think, psychology students, and it, it promotes discussion. And when you think about Amanda's video and how many different pieces and parts of a story are in it, when it talks about mental health, it talks about bullying and, and cyberbullying, it talks about how she felt in school, it talks about peer relationships, there are all those areas that are learning tools, right? You can stop it and you can talk about it and learn from it. And so this email that I got said that after people, and these are kids, these are you people in their 19, 18, 19, mm -hmm. 20 that are going to college, right? Mm -hmm. And they talk about their own bullying experiences or, or, you know, even the fact that some people who have bullied in their life stand up and they are ready to talk about it. So that, in a sense, is bringing out a whole um, diversity of people willing to share a personal experience from Amanda's eight-minute YouTube video, which is... And I said that from the very beginning, in the first... Right after, you know, the day after she died, on October 11th, and the YouTube video was pulled off of YouTube. Mm. And so someone contacted Google and, and it was put back up. And someone asked me, you know, why was it so important for that video to come back on? And I always said that I wanted it used as a, as a learning tool. Mm -hmm. And for, for not only for kids in school, but for young adults and for parents. Um, yeah. There's more kids out there that have seen the video. I think it's important for adults to mm -hmm. see the video, to s understand how kids can be so hurtful and then yeah. how kids can hurt so much mm -hmm. right so yeah. it's good for everyone to see right yeah. definitely how do you want the world to remember amanda um i think it's, it's a hard question because half the world well most of the world doesn't know amanda mm -hmm. right but when you look and read at, at some of the messages that i get it almost feels like people people know her they want to know her and so i think from the youtube video that she made plus the stories about her plus everything else that you see people feel that um, she's part of their life and and so those are the messages that I get and so how did how to remember Amanda I remember as a as a you know a young girl who who struggled with some things that went on with mm -hmm. um, you know social issues um, but she wasn't always like this she was a very strong um, child as she grew up she always knew what she wanted mm -hmm. and and because of what went on in in the two years it just it, it was a layers and layers got stripped off her right mm -hmm. and so that's what it's sort of like I don't know how you explain it like you know when you do paper mache and you're putting the layers and yeah, layers yeah, on yeah. and it gets harder yeah. and when you start to peel those layers off or an onion an onion a dry mm -hmm. onion okay. when you start to peel those layers off it just gets smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller and that's the self-confidence it just gets smaller and smaller till it disappears, disappears right yeah. you mentioned Amanda was a victim of sextortion what is sextortion it's good that you asked that question mm -hmm. because a media release came out from the Canadian Center for Child Protection on sextortion and sextortion had there's been an increase in it in the last few weeks and and what it is Amanda she was on video chat with people who she thought was her own age and so they developed a, a conversation and trust of some sort and then that person at the other end may say to the young person to perform a sexual show or to do a sexual act or to show you know a part of your body in a sexual way and that person might because they've built up the trust it's called grooming right when that that young person does the person that's at the other end 
who they think is a 16 year old or a t- another teenager may be an adult mm-hmm. and they take an image through their computers. With that image then they go back to the young person and say if you don't do more we're going to share this image with your friends and, and sextortion is if you don't do more, if you don't pay us some money we're going to share this with your family and share it with your friends. That's sextortion because it's extortion with um, a sexual connotation to it, wow. right? And so that is increasing now. The message out there is for young people and even and even older people, right? Don't get involved with these kinds of things. If someone's encouraging you to do a sexual act, don't do it because you don't know who's at the other end and Mm -hmm. those images once they're put out on the internet are there forever yeah you can't take them they can't take them off right and that's horrible yeah horrible to know that you know we've always heard of extortion in the real sense and now using technology they're they're doing it in another way and unfortunately sometimes you know people are finding it unbearable and and it causes them so much mental distress Mm -hmm. right so and recently, the Canadian government has been putting forth motions and bills to combat cyberbullying. Um, what are your thoughts on the progress made in the few uh, the past few months? Well, they have Bill C thirteen that that deals with uh, sh- you know making sharing of intimate images um, against the law and and a criminal act and punishable, which is really good. That's been going on. I guess they're trying to pass this legislation. It's been going on for pretty close to maybe a year now, and it's still in discussions about what they're going to do because I believe this this whole bill has many many pages and, and mm-hmm. there's been some discussion on all the different parts of the bill but the part about the intimate images is a strong part and that needs to be definitely needs to be passed so that um, there's there's punishable laws for that act in terms of the other parts they'll have to discuss that right but it's really mm-hmm. good that the government's working on that and there's also the government has built a website called stop hating online and that deals with i don't know if you guys have seen it on tv and in the movie theaters little one minute clips on kids showing pictures and and if they get a picture on their phone showing it and and it'll be a, a sexting image or something and the message is don't pass it forward mm-hmm. right report it um and stop it and it's now they're going to put make more advertisements and put it on online so Mm -hmm. for example if you if you bring up a youtube video it might show it before before you watch the video to get it to a broader audience right and and lots of people watch youtube and so those are are things that they're they're calling to action now and and different kinds of sextortion and and things that our young people can get involved with without even knowingly yeah. mm-hmm. realizing it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think should be done to stop bullying? Well, I think everyone's starting to do the right things, but there is never, ever enough. There's always those that exist, that coexist on the behaviors. They get their pleasures out of making other people feel miserable, mm. right? I still think that more needs to be done in the aspects of bullying, cyberbullying, mental health, social media awareness. It needs to be, of course, in the schools, but it needs to be talked about within families. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be talked about within communities. I think that when you say the word bullying, you have a lot of kids now rolling their eyes and they don't want to hear about it yeah. anymore. As a teacher, I think we should be also focusing a lot lot more on on how to respect others and and how to be Mm. more kind and compassionate to others and it just doesn't start in the schools when you're in kindergarten it needs to start when you're when you're really really young Mm -hmm. so where does the education come in it comes into our adults right and then it also comes into to our kids and it's almost comparable to you don't sit in a car and ride in it when it's moving without a seatbelt on you just know you have to put that on automatically. Mm-hmm. Well, we should know that we need to be kind to yeah. others automatically. Mm-hmm. When you bully and you see negative things, that's an effort. You have to actually think of the negative things to yeah. say. When we're, we as parents are raising kids, we always, we always teach our kids to say please and thank, thank you, you and, and use their manners. Mm, but the somewhere things. in there, we always we stop reminding because we think that it's permanent. 
but it's not permanent. So mm-hmm. we have to continue to work at something really hard to make it make a difference, yeah, right? Yeah. So I would love to see a, more of a focus on the kindness and compassion than some of the bullying stuff that we're doing that's not making any impact mm-hmm. anymore yeah, because definitely. kids aren't listening. Since Amanda's passing, you've been advocating for anti-bullying resources, including some apps. How do you think apps and social media have contributed to anti-bullying efforts? There's lots of social media things out there, and there's there's apps that are starting to come out related to bullying and cyberbullying, and, and they may share a piece of advice or they may be a reporting tool. I know that in BC, our government has done a erase bullying button that you can find on a website to report mm-hmm. bullying. But then again, I think it's more predominant right now in the United States with a lot of apps and buttons and, and reporting tools, and, and they're going to filter up here slowly. And I was just in the United States actually in July and looking at an app called Stop It, and it's got four components to it. And you you can report something related to bullying or cyberbullying to a school if the school signs up or to a trusted adult and, and have that adult help you. Or you can report it with your name attached or you can report it anonymously. But it's all about telling and getting someone to help you that is able to help you. Kids sometimes tell their peers, but but as kids, you can't always work on getting um, the right kind of supports, oh, yeah. right? So us as adults, we've we've been around the block a few times and we're here to help the kids that are in need so Mm. that's really important so that's one app that that I I fully endorse that it works and so you can find it on iTunes right I think it's still evolving because cyber bullying has been around forever cyber bullying is new and of course using apps and software is part of technology which is new and so it's ever changing and ever evolving and we're having to catch up as adults yeah, and yeah. the world we have to catch up on on this but then when we catch up it moves another step ahead mm. so it's it's work in progress yeah. right? mm-hmm. unfortunately there are probably kids in similar situations viewing this episode right now um, which resources do you recommend for those who may be struggling with issues like amanda did they have to find an adult a trusted adult to share to talk to there are crisis lines to call related to um, how they're feeling and coping. Um, Kids Help Phone is Mm -hmm. one that um, I fully endorse. They've got trained counselors, professional counselors at the other end, and it's 24-7 if you call the number. If you go on their website, they deal with all the different topics related to why someone may feel distressed. Yeah. Bullying, mm-hmm. cyberbullying, dating, friends, everything that you can think of. And if you're afraid to talk to someone on the phone, they also have a web chat line oh. that you can go on to. And But the first thing is is the adults that are in your life, right? Whether it's in your school, or whether it's in your family, or it even could be, you know, your your best friend's parent who, mm-hmm. who you have a, a good relationship with. Or or it might be your, you know, your soccer coach that, that you get along with that you want to share. And, and that person can help. Be the bridger when with your parents or mm-hmm. whatever, right? Definitely. But you can't do it alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Now we'd like to talk to you more about the nonprofit organization you started. So tell us about the Amanda Todd Legacy Society. After Amanda died, um, it's a f- it's a funny story actually. I I received all these flowers from all over the place. As, as young people, you won't understand how much flowers really cost, but they are <laughs> quite costly. And I thought the money that people are spending could be better spent towards helping mm-hmm. others, right? And my goal was to you know. Um, eventually do a trust and donate it to charity Mm -hmm. in Amanda's name and so I started a trust fund and put it out there to my friends that if you wanted to do something put your money towards this instead of the flowers that would come to my house and so we did and it started and then it went international somehow and and so um, we created you know the Amanda Todd legacy we decided that as the dollars came in, we would put it to use on helping other kids. And that was Amanda's thing, the dream of helping kids. If you look at her YouTube video and I found a message in her computer, that's all what she wanted to do was was mm. help kids. And so the dollars that, came, yeah, that have come so far, we've given it to Kids Help Phone and we've granted to the Boys and Girls Club and we've, you know, access youth for at-risk youth. And so we just keep moving some of it forward right and and then the legacy is built on um, awareness 
awareness, resources, and education. And, and I go out and I do some speaking presentations. And I think, why me? Because I have a, it's my story, right? Mm -hmm. It's my story to share. And so my, my thing is that if I wake up, you go to bed one night and you wake up the next morning and I go and speak. So when I speak to 500 people, then 500 people more know yeah. about the story of Amanda and the legacy and move it forward. So mm -hmm. it's just c continuing to increase awareness. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for reaching out to the community like that. Good. You're welcome. Your society runs a lot of events. Um, your last event was called Bikes Against Bullying, held last July. What was that all about? It was a second annual event. They had one a year previous, and it was, you know, gathering motorcycle enthusiasts together and, and to do a ride. The first year they couldn't do a ride, but the second year they did from Port Coquitlam to um, Vancouver, gathering others who support a cause because bullying isn't just we think of bullying we think of young people but it happens with young people it happens with older people it happens mm -hmm. in the workplace mm -hmm. and so you know the conversations that were happening was were about how it shouldn't happen and and how it's happened to others and and seeing all these 150 shiny motorcycles all polished up and ready for a ride and it was a day that was really nice and and sunny and warm and it was just a nice feeling to know that it was just yet another group of, of people who were supporting a cause, right? And mm -hmm. so, and these were all adults because obviously kids can't ride their motorcycles. <laughs> but it was, you know what, there were lots of, um, um, there were families at the other end and hot dogs and, and things, information at the other end. So it was a good event. It cool. was, yeah. And next year will be the third annual, so. Good. And your next event, Light Up the World Purple, is on quite a unique day, isn't it? Light Up the World Purple is on October 10th, which mm -hmm. is World Mental Health Day. And it has been World Mental Health Day since 1992. Mm -hmm. And it's also the day that um, Amanda took her life. And so mm -hmm. to pair the two together up was just made sense for me. It, mm -hmm. And it's given me um, a, an outlet to make myself feel that I'm doing something positive more positive for the world and making a difference so we created light up the world purple to make people more aware of mental health and mental wellness and so we've asked a lot of landmarks around the world to light up purple if they're able to and we have gotten some got many actually that are going to be lighting up purple so in Vancouver who we have you know we have Rogers Arena and BC Place mm -hmm. and the Olympic Cauldron and Science World mm -hmm. and some heritage buildings and in Ontario we have Niagara Falls and the CN Tower and Toronto City Hall and places in London, Ontario and Mississauga, just other cities that are getting involved also. And just recently we got the Ferris wheel in Santa Monica wow. and we have a bridge in mm -hmm. Boston and we've got a bridge that spans from Ontario to New York lighting up purple and we've also got cities that are proclaiming October 10th as World Mental Health Day. And that would be Vancouver and North Vancouver. And there's also cities working on lighting up their things purple, like Port Coquitlam and Surrey and, and different places and, and Victoria. And, and so that's really nice to see yeah, that we're, we're creating more awareness. And, and, you know, on October 10th, there's also going to be, you know, Signs, digital signboards around Canada that will be promoting light up purple too. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. That's good. Yeah. Usually we see uh, pink in association with bullying, but what is the importance of the color purple? Well, purple happens to be my daughter's favorite color mm -hmm. and also the favorite color of, of many. And it's a color actually mm -hmm. of, we know, the ribbons that people wear. It's, it's the color of sexual violence. And it's also the color of royalty, right? And mm -hmm. so if you look at um, the, the logo that we've designed for Amanda's legacy, and you'll see it's, it's three colors. And the pink around the edges are for the bullying that happens in... It's a bullying color for Canada. Yeah. We've... Yeah. we've we've adopted that and the blue is actually the the bullying color in the united states they use oh, that mm -hmm. for bullying and cyber bullying mm -hmm. and so when you put the pink and the blue together you get purple and that's mm -hmm. in the middle and it was my way of bringing other countries involved together. with the same movement mm -hmm. and so when you know when we light up the world purple it's for mental health and it's also for the stuff that causes the mental health so it, that's that just, interesting yeah, yeah. Yeah. just made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
How can the youth get involved with the Amanda Todd legacy? I think if I had one wish, and it would be for more kindness and more respect. And so if every youth could be kinder, more respectful, then we would have less of what goes on to hurt people. That would be something that's easy and easily done. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that for youth to, if you're seeing something happen um, to others, then don't be the bystander that stands mm. there and just watches. Do something proactive and um, report it to someone, tell someone, share it with someone that can help, right? And so there's a whole bunch of, of not only youth, but people that stand and, and watch, right? They need to do something a lot more proactive. If someone really wants to help with the legacy, they can contact the legacy through our email address, amandatodlegacy at gmail.com, and they can ask to volunteer. We would one day love to have a youth component to the legacy. There are always little things and big things that they can do to help, and mm -hmm. I know that kids are always needing, senior kids are, are needing high school, you're, you're needing volunteer hours, right? Oh, yeah. And so mm -hmm. what a better way to incorporate that by doing something really positive for a nation and adding in doing your schoolwork too. So that's one way that you guys can help. All right, thank awesome. you. Well, we've had quite an enlightening conversation with you, Carol. Once again, thank you for letting us talk with you and for being part of our show. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to say before we close? Um, I didn't talk about the significance of the snowflake. And we all have to think about ourselves as snowflakes. So I would call Amanda my princess snowflake and it was just a nickname. I didn't know she liked it. I found out when I one day called her by her real name and she wanted me to call her princess snowflake. Aww. And then when after she passed away and I had to write some words for her memorial service, I looked up the word snowflake. And in the urban dictionary, it talks about a snowflake being a young girl with unique qualities. And so I thought mm, that fits with Amanda, right? Mm -hmm. And then I looked up the snowflake in just the sense of Google and I saw snowflakes, right? Pictures of snowflakes. And when you think of a snowflake, what do you think of? And so what's one word that you could think of when you see um, a snowflake? Well, they're unique. They're not, like one snowflake isn't the same as another snowflake. Right, yeah. so they're unique and they're mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. and they're fragile, yeah. right? And no two are alike. And so when you think about human beings in the world, we're all unique and we're all individual and we all are fragile and we're strong, right? But we're all our own person, and mm -hmm. so when you're when you're unique and individual, no one has the right to harass you or bully you because of your what you are mm -hmm. and, and and what you've become in your life. So in a sense, everybody in the world is a snowflake, mm -hmm. right? And so we should treat each other that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we've used the snowflake as mm -hmm. the design logo mm -hmm. to symbolize Amanda's legacy. Yeah, it's funny you say that because Club Fucci um, stands for fun, F, unique. Mm -hmm creative individual, individual. so fuji oh, there you go. yeah so we want um the youth to be um together to be all respectful of each other and that's pretty much the vision of our show yeah. oh good so, yeah and it's funny because you'll see snowflakes when you look at a snowflake you'll you'll think of it differently now mm -hmm. right because i used to think of just snow as snow and and mm. now i find them everywhere and mm -hmm. so it's very symbolic yeah yeah well with that we're the riveras and this has been club fuji up front Stay tuned to find out who will be our next guest on Upfront. Let's take you back to the show.